all stands, we sing our first song, Hello. Forever.
pray together. We are thankful, Lord, that we can be here tonight. We don't want this just to be a uh, get-together of some people that know each other, even love each other. We want this to be a time when we hear from you, and we will if we're listening. And you have promised it in Jesus' name. Amen. Please have a seat. God is good. And all the time. Let Jesus be seen in 2016. Thank you. Amen. All right. 281 weeks in a row. We've had at least one motorcycle. Thank you. And obviously, we're in the time of the year where it's no problem at all to uh, have a motorcycle. We'll be going up to Dee Dee's Dairy. I don't want to tell you what to do, but I suggest you order a small. Okay. Wow. All right, Bikers at the Bakery is still happening, and we'll go, I think, till the end of September, but I'm not 100% sure. It might be October. Uh, we need to double-check on that, but it's still going at uh, Olson's Free Hot Dogs, Free Coffee, and uh, whatever baked goods you want to buy. Paul and I are not buying baked goods at Olson's or anywhere else. Are we, Paul? No, we're not. All right. Um, but if you would like to uh, help sponsor us in the Weight Loss Challenge for the Christmas bag, the sponsor sheets will be on the Welcome Center out there, or you can make a straight donation. And anybody have a birthday today? Today. Uh, okay, you could have made free at Didi's, and I'd have bought you a large if you wanted one. All right. Uh, is that it? That is it. All right. It is uh, Deacon Chaplain Wayne's turn to preach the word tonight, so let's listen to him. How you doing? How are you guys? How's everybody doing today? Put my goggles on. I know that. The water balloon fight took a lot out of me. They, uh, they almost had me. They had me down, but not out. Pastor Don and I survived. Amen. Amen. Well, let's just uh, jump right into the word. Isaiah 55, 8. Oh, that's the wrong one, actually. I don't think I changed it. I thought I changed it. Is it below that one? No. Okay, that's okay. I'll read it. Yeah, she'll find it. I read it. That's my bad. I know I changed it. I must not have clicked the link. Did you ever do that? Now I've been doing that a lot where I've been texting messages and never hitting send. And the people write back, well, why didn't you answer me? I never hit send. So. All right. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Now, I picked that up. I actually had a little something else to do, but I'm going to do it, but I couldn't get into the time constraints. And it's going to be interesting. We're going to be watching a cartoon when the time comes, so hold that in your thoughts. Um, this I, I came upon through the daily bread. By seeing that scripture, is there anyone that would like to take a shot and think of what that's based on? What you would think that... Okay, well let me go ahead and tell you. According to the Daily Bread that I was reading, it was a story about understanding God. Now the story really didn't hit me too well, but the, the scripture did, and understanding God, which was pretty much, I felt really on and really talking about that situation. Um, a lot of times in my life, I'll probably repeat this more than once, and I know I have said to God several times, God, I don't understand this probably have two and then it goes on to whatever we feel or pray but then it came to the point god i don't understand this but i understand you you know it's like that i don't know oxymoron and i can hear god saying who are you calling a moron so i try not to say that uh, and it's just dumbfounding with me it's more or less god put me on your wavelength because i'm not supposed to be on your wavelength. I'm here to, to serve you now. I'm not here to put you in a box for what I want you for. So then I thought, understanding God, hmm, that's a really good theological question. Understanding Him. So what did I do? Go ahead, ask me. What did I do? Well, thank you very much for... So I thought and I thought, and then I still decided to wash my pillowcases. No. You know, I prayed and I asked God, 
what this meant. I said, I think I know what it means to me because I prayed and I think you've kind of answered me there. So this is what we came up with. It's not me, it's we. First off, I think it's not God understanding us. Somehow I think God has that all figured out right now, by now. Before we were born, he said he knew us in our mother's womb. So I think he's got that part all figured out. It's all about us fitting into God's plans. He didn't come along and say, well, what do you want me to do for you, everything, this, that. I mean, it's, it's kind of getting on a little part of, of God that I think some people don't really take that effort to go out and, and preach on. You know, God was a pretty tough customer, as you can read in the, the Old Testament. You know, if you, go, if you want to take that angle. Sometimes it was like his way or the highway, but it was a good highway and it was a good way. And I think it all starts with, if we don't gain a relationship with God, accept his gift of salvation, read and learn his word, pray and be obedient to him, then why will we understand why? I don't think we will. I don't think... Because I think if we understood why, we would be different. I'm talking, you know, more of the, of the unsaved. God gave us a, a, leg, a leg up because we have, and he honors that, and he honors us when we have accepted that free gift of salvation. That we must fit into his plans for us, not our plan for him. Because our plans usually pretty much will probably f be filled with worldly things. And we're born of sin, like I'll probably mention more, more than once, and we'll probably bring a lot of worldly things, a lot of worldly situations, circumstances, maybe a little bit of anger sometimes. And God, you know, that's good, but... It's not really acceptable. It's not me. It's you. What the difference is, I think, is when God says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. God's thoughts are going to be way, way more pure, more true, more loving than we could ever even imagine. So there's a whole world of, of difference there. Not saying that we can't attain that or we can't strive for that, which what we should be doing. I know, I know that even me, and for some of you, I don't know if you're thinking the same thing, but right away what goes through my head is, from my point of view, there is no one that can love my wife, my kids, my grandkids, my motorcycle, or car, or money, or Legos, or trains more than I can. Well, yeah, he can. God loves your wife, your kids, your siblings, your mother, your father, your friends, and even people you don't like far, far more than we ever could. So right there, there's a difference. And actually, honestly, the harsh thing, like I said about God, kind of in the Old Testament, I don't think really God really cares much how much you love your motorcycle, your car, your money, your Legos, your trains. Go ahead, love them. Just don't put them in front of me. Just don't put them before me. I think that's one of the most, the most key, key scriptures. And thinking of a friend in that situation, he was, you know, a lot of people will say, well, you know, I prayed and I want to move. It'll, it'll help out my wife. But I really don't know if I should. I've been praying and I haven't heard anything from God. You know, he isn't telling me this or that. There's no answer. I'm not getting no answer. And he asked me and I was thinking and praying. And I says, well, you know what? Maybe God's just hands off on that. Maybe he knows that wherever you go, 
he's going to be well represented. He's going to have an ambassador. So go. Take care of your wife. Where your wife's going to have to go, have to need. You know, take care of that. I know that you're still taking care of things from me and of me. So sometimes don't let that be a, a sticking point. Sometimes Satan will really get in there and, and mess around. Well, God doesn't really want you to go there. Just as much as some people say, well, God really wants me to go there. You've got to be very careful. And I think we just got to remember most of all the factor is that he's God and we're not. It's basically, if you want to get down to the whole thing, he's God, we're not. He knows better. No matter sometimes how we feel, disappointed, sad, prayers not answered. I think a lot of times we'll find out why in our lives. A lot of times we never will. A lot of times we'll just forget about it. And we have way different influences on us being born of sin and have been given the, cha given the choice to change or not. That choice is a big thing. We've been given that. We have a choose between Two places. We're going to live forever. Where we want to live it is up to us. As Mark 7.20 says, What comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. So we know we all have it in us. We know we don't come out with the best stuff all the time. Paul's law of Mark 7.21 says, For from within, out of men's hearts, come evil thoughts. And it goes on with the evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery. It keeps going on with more things. So he knows we're subjected to the world and things of this world. So that comes back to Isaiah 55, 8, as we kind of touched on. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. So I kind of split that and thinking about your ways are not my ways. And that direction on that meter always seems to point towards sin. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. Why? Sometimes we have sinful thoughts. He doesn't. God does not sin. And we do. We all know that. So it says in Isaiah 55, 7, Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And our God, for he will freely pardon. We got a little little safety net there. Right? Got a little safety net. Freely pardon. So that's hope for all. When it comes to our ways, not his ways. So if you're sinning, just stop it and pray. If you can't stop, just try harder and pray. If you still can't stop, go to your pastor and you'll both pray. If you still can't, just can't stop, well, still pray. And I hate to say, you're probably doomed. Because God will give us over to a reprobate mind. Don't ever let it go there. And there is a difference that kind of came up. There's a difference. Sin is sin. But I think in David's case, there was a sin God called David a dad, uh, a dad, a man after my own heart, premeditated murder, adultery. God, what are you doing here? Man after your own heart, you say? Yeah. Never really too much of an answer. And then I started reading the Psalms. And I think God wasn't talking about the deeds or the sin. I think he was talking about David's true heartfelt repentance. Truly repenting. And the difference is sometimes sinning. I don't want you to do this just because you're truly repentant and you think about sinning. No, that doesn't work that way. But the truly repentance and the truly trying and advancing and changing and turning. Sometimes it took a long time to fall into ways that I know I did like, or some people didn't like. So it might take a little bit of time to, to crawl out of them with God's help, pastor's help, Christian's help. 
Or the other way of sinning is just playing God for a chump. And I highly caution you on that. Because that could get you really burned. You know what I mean? That's why we have to understand God's on His terms, not ours. It's all good. It's all loving. It's just His terms. And you'll see that the more as you know Him, understand Him, His Word, His ways. And I came across this by Charles Stanley. Even when we do not understand what God is up to in our lives, which may happen frequently, that's for sure, He asks us to trust Him. He knows what He is doing, even if we cannot comprehend His method or His timing. For to obey God is to bless ourselves. To disobey Him is to curse ourselves. I have come, Jesus said, that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Abundantly. That's from John 10.10. 10. So coming out of this whole thing and think as a, just a, a closing tidbit, you know, sometimes you think you want to say more words than really is appropriate. Just for me, I think the key to understanding God is trying not to understand ourselves sometimes but have the obedience, trust, and faith in Him. I think that overshadows anything as far as trying to understand ourselves. Because I know for me, sometimes I can't even be trusted with myself. That's why I need God. That's why I'm glad I have God. Let's pray. Father God, I thank You, Lord, for always being or two or more gathered, you are in the midst. And, and we are so grateful that we just want to honor you, love you, be obedient, be truthful. As we could strive towards you and do the things for you. Be a true servant like your son was sent. And we ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.